Officer Association and today I want to talk to you about uh, what is a veteran or who is a veteran. For some reason it seems like it would be a simple concept but it really ends up being much more difficult when you start looking into what benefits an individual may qualify for as a veteran. So we ended up really getting uh, into the law to figure out how you determine exactly what a veteran is or who a veteran is and then take it a step further and look at how those benefits may apply. I think the confusion of it starts because whenever you go to the House of Veteran Affairs Committee, whenever you go to the Veterans Affairs um, Department of Veteran Affairs, or when you go to the Congressional Research Service, which is the group that writes about a lot of the laws that are being passed from the Library of Congress, they tend to always talk about the veteran in relation to benefits because obviously that's what Congress is going to do. Congress is going to pass laws. Uh, as it relates to benefits and they're going to appropriate. So you have the authorization laws and the appropriations as it relates to veterans. But we, ha we have to kind of step back from that view of it to say, before we get to the benefits part, how do we know when a military member is a veteran? Because what we found in the past is that not everyone who has served is actually considered a veteran. So they, at, uh, probably about a couple years past, they had veteran status passed, but it didn't include benefits. So which one of those is better? Are they, is there a way to rate them or is there not? So when I got into the reg, I went to title, what's called Title 38. The titles are actually the laws. So title 38 specifically is for veterans programs. Uh, if you're familiar with the military at all, then you know Title 10 is for uh, Department of Defense. So obviously, if I'm talking veterans or veteran status, I'm gonna go to Title 38. For that, you really don't have to go very far. You go to what's called Section 101, and that's definitions. And all of the titles, all of the laws have this definitions title, uh, or this definition section, which is always a good place to start when you're trying to figure out or read how law is written and how it actually is going to apply. So in particular, I went to 38 United States Code 101, um, subparagraph two, and that is the term veteran means a person who served in the active military, naval, or air service, and who was discharged or released therefrom under conditions other than dishonorable. Now, if you'll note, that definition does not state anywhere specifically guard and reserve. So then you end up taking it one step more. And this is not unusual when you're reading law to read a certain section and then realize you have to reference another section. So in this case, we had to go to another section of 101, subparagraph 24, to see what is the definition of active military. Will that definition, in fact, include the Guard and Reserve? So when we go to that one, we find out that A, it includes active duty, B, it includes any period of active duty for training during which the individual concerned was disabled or died, and C, any period of inactive duty training during which the individual concerned was disabled or died. So we know now that when a Guard and Reserve is on active duty, so specifically under duty statuses, we're talking active duty for support, that we know a Guard and Reserve member qualifies as a veteran. Note that the most important part of this definition is it does not describe a specific number of days that have to have been performed in order to be considered a veteran, which means that Guard and Reserve, if they, if they spend one or more days on active duty for support, they are a veteran. The confusion has always come from when you go into the other ones. So people will argue with me and they'll say, no, no, uh, you're only a veteran if you have 180 days on, on duty. That's when you're a veteran. Well, that's not true. We just saw under Section 101 that you're a veteran if you perform just even one day. The difference is a veteran then has to accumulate different qualifying uh, aspects of the law in order to qualify for different benefits. So most normally when you're talking 180 days, you're talking benefits that tie into a veteran who is considered under wartime qualification. So a peacetime veteran would be any veteran who has done one or more days of active duty for support, 
A wartime veteran for benefits is normally an individual that has accumulated time during wartime and national emergencies. And that's another one where if you go into the title of 38 or the laws, you're going to find out that these um, periods are specified so you don't have to guess is this considered wartime or not. So it's going to include, um, you know, the uh, World War I, World War II, the Gulf War. It does not always include um, uh, crisis or peacetime missions that we've done. So just if you're not sure of what's a wartime versus a peacetime, just go into the law and look at wartime service. Um, so I think that the problem is that when these other agencies like Congress and DOD or VA or Congressional Research Service talk about veteran and veteran status, they're always talking about it because they're, they're talking about, you know, are you eligible for the GI Bill? Are you eligible for a home loan? Are you eligible for medical care? Are you eligible for, you know, additional training because you're uh, totally disabled? So I, I really just wanted to clear up that there are, are two ways of looking at veteran status. There's veteran status for being able to call yourself a veteran and you've met the qualifying requirements for being considered a veteran. And then there are the requirements that uh, you have to look into when you're a veteran trying to qualify for benefits. So I hope that cleared things up a little bit more because it is a, a very confusing issue. We do have information about this. In fact, the paper that I've been reading from uh, Who is a Veteran is a blog that I posted to um, www.roa.org, so you can read about it more. But I also thought sometimes just having somebody explain the difference can be a lot easier uh, than when you're having to get through all of this law that I included. So I hope that helps, and we'll be talking more about veteran status and the different benefits that you qualify for. Hope to see you soon.